right, so after a small break, canvas is a little bit drier, doesn't have to be all the way dry. We are ready to work on our background. I'm going to use a small round brush. Um, the size of the brush doesn't necessarily matter as long as it's not a gigantic round brush. So just like I told you guys before, the flat brushes are flat because the metal part is pinched, makes all the bristles lay flat. The round brush, the metal part is round, and so all of your bristles kind of stay together in that shape. So what we're gonna do is on our palette, you are gonna take a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And how I like to do this is I like to grab from the edge of my paint, okay, and find a new spot, and then I like to roll that paint off. And I do that because then you get almost all of the paint off of your brush. Now, black is a very powerful color, and so when you add it to the white, you're gonna add a little bit at a time. So I'm just gonna pull from the very edge and I'm just gonna add a little bit of black into my white. I'm making a light gray color, okay? And as I make this light gray color, um, I can either add more white or add more black. It's really up to me, but I just want something a little bit lighter than, or sorry, a little bit darker than my white. So that's a great light color. What I'm gonna do with this gray color is I am going to make some ghost trees in the background. And the reason I call them ghost trees is I don't wanna see them all the way. I want them to be very light, very airy. If you look at the original, um, these are the ghost trees back there. So these ghost trees, I like to start at the top of my canvas and come down. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm just gonna make a couple of straight lines they don't have to be super neat. They don't have to be completely solid. It's okay if there's some color showing through, but I'm gonna have them run the length of my canvas. Now, as I'm doing this, you're gonna realize that again, I like to stick in threes. So I'm gonna make sure that I either have three, five, or seven. If you run out of paint, it's okay if you make more. Then I'm going to add some tree branches to these. And the branches are pretty simple. All you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to make letter Y's. Do you guys see how there's a letter Y right there? You could take that letter Y and you can add another little letter Y to the side of it. Okay, these are all going to be in the background. So how neat they are doesn't necessarily matter. You want to make sure that they take up the whole space. They go all the way from the top, all the way down to that separation from your horizontal and your vertical lines in your background. And you wanna make sure that some of them have a little bit of detail. You don't have to have a whole lot of detail. I had to mix a little bit more gray, so it's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add a couple more back here. Maybe one right here in the middle. Now, if you notice, I just did something that I hate. I have like almost the same amount of space between all of these. It's like one of my pet peeves. Um, neat art is not my favorite. I like things to be a little bit more interesting to the eye. So I'm gonna add in an extra one right here. And I'm gonna add in an extra one right here. This way what I'm doing is I'm weighting this side a little heavier. There's a little bit more going on on this side. And so for me, that's a more interesting type of art. If you are a type A person, and no, I'm not making fun of you type A people, um, but if you do like to have a little bit more space in between all of your art, you can do that. It's just not what talks to me when I make my art. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add some more letter Y's. I'm gonna bring them all down. I'm gonna show you guys something funny that I see a lot. Um, if you're painting with your kid right now, you're probably gonna notice that they're gonna do this. They're gonna take this and they're gonna add a Y here, and a Y here, and a Y here. And they're all gonna be the exact same going down. Now that can work okay if you're turning these into pine trees, but you really wanna make sure that as you're doing this, you are not making all of your branches identical. You are not making them all meet at your trees at the same locations. 
You want to make sure that some of your branches are long, some are short, some are going further up into the sky, some are going further out towards the edges. You want to make sure that your trees look like they are from nature and that they are varied. You do not want to have them all being identical. So as I'm adding these in here, and they can go over each other, it's okay. But as I'm adding these in here, I'm seeing that I've got this nice background area and I'm ready to move on to my darker trees. So these are finished. We're not gonna add anything else to them. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna wipe it off. And I'm gonna go to the straight black color. Now, because we have some gray already on our background, some of those gray colors will pull into our tree and give our tree a little bit of natural highlight. And that's what we want. I'm going to lay this painting out by adding three trees. I'm gonna put one on this side and two over here. So to start that, I am going to make a letter Y over here for tree number one. If you notice, all of my gray trees stopped at that horizontal line. My black trees are going to dip just below it. So I'm gonna put a letter Y there. I'm gonna make this one kind of the main tree. So I'm just gonna draw a straight line right here. And then I'm gonna do another letter Y right here off to that side. So my three trees are laid out. As you are laying your three trees out, you do wanna make sure that you've got two next to each other, and one all by himself. Now I'm going to show you how I like to build my trees. Building your trees is completely up to you. Um, I've got a couple people that take my classes that turn their canvas upside down to paint their trees because then they can focus more on the shape of the tree and less on the fact that it is a tree. So they swear by that method. I like to keep mine right side up. It's really up to you. So I'm going to start with my main tree right here. First things first, I want to make him a little bit fatter. I want him to really kind of stand out in the space. Then I'm going to add in a couple of letter Y's. We've talked about this. Trees are just made up of letter Y's. If you notice that you, these two branches are the exact same height, make one of them a little bit longer. You can maybe even add an extra little Y on there. When I paint my trees, I always like to start at the edge of the branch and take a line that goes all the way down through the tree. And the reason I like to do it is because otherwise you have these little weird spaces where this part's fat and this part's skinny and it just doesn't make sense to the eye. So if you start here and you pull it all the way in and you don't stop until you hit the base of the tree, then your tree is gonna be more fluid and it's going to come together a little better. I'm going to add another branch up here. Take it all the way down. I always like to start at the edge of my branches and come down into the tree. I'm going to make another little Y over here. Go back and get some more paint. you've got these areas right here where you can see that the canvas is coming through that just means you don't have enough paint on your brush you just go back through and add a little bit more paint in that area that'll take care of that problem also we're going to be adding a lot of leaves to these so if you have a spot that you don't necessarily love you just cover it with leaves base of my tree just a little bit chunkier now. And the reason I'm doing that is because you want the base of your tree to be chunky so that the wind won't knock it over. So now that I've got one tree finished, 
I'm going to work on my other trees in the exact same fashion. I'm going to work on the letter Y's that go all the way down to the base. I'm going to work on filling up some of my spaces. Don't be afraid to let your tree fall off the edge of the canvas. If you were to take a photograph in nature, that's exactly what would happen. You would have some of your trees have all of their branches in your picture and others, some of them would fall off. Nothing wrong with that. Take your time on your trees, make them how you like them. If you notice your tree branches are too fat, what you can do is you can make your tree trunks a little bit fatter as well. That is a possible way to fix that issue. Also, if you're noticing your tree branches are too thick, you can try to get yourself a skinnier baby paintbrush. All right, let's finish that tree out. I'm gonna show you a fun little trick. You don't have to do this, but you are more than welcome to go back in and add it in. Um, my background was pretty dry when I started, so I didn't get a whole lot of variation in my black color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna wipe it off just a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white paint and I'm going to add these are ghost lines. My brush is almost not touching my canvas. And I'm gonna just add a couple of lines in here like this. And after I have those lines in there, I'm gonna start at the tip of my branches. I'm gonna pull them down. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna add just a little bit of change in the color of my tree. And it's going to add a little bit of what's going to look almost like some bark in the tree. Remember, you don't want to mix it all the way in, otherwise you'll get gray. And then you should have just started with gray. But you can add just a little bit of white in here. So that you have this really nice variation of color. And it looks like tree bark. Let's finish up our last tree now. It's weird for me to teach an online painting class because usually I'm teaching a bunch of people that are either brought together for a benefit of some reason or at a winery. Um, so it's kind of weird to teach without having anybody to heckle. A lot of times when I teach, I give my artists a hard time. And anybody who's ever been in one of my paint classes before probably knows that. So I'm really trying to think of funny things to say thinking right now of my painters at Quibble Hill. Uh, that's a winery I paint at in Palmyra, Indiana. And I was thinking about, I wonder if they're questioning if I'm gonna make fun of their type A personalities online or their chicken feet. Sometimes chicken feet happen when you're painting trees. Do you guys see the chicken foot right here? So chicken feet are a common problem when you have three branches all together that are the exact same length. You look like you got a chicken foot on your canvas. So an easy way to fix that is add an extra one in, maybe make a couple of them longer. Okay. Or when we get to the point where we're going to add leaves, just add a bunch of leaves to it. in my white. So I 
really like highlights in my trees. This is my first ever YouTube video for painting. So if you leave a comment, please make it be nice. I'm learning just like you are. This whole social distancing thing is difficult for me. I am an in-your-face kind of person. <laughs> Whew. It's hard not to be in anybody's face. All right, so I've got my three trees. I'm happy with them. I'm gonna let them sit there and dry a little bit while I add in my greenery. So for the greenery, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a mixture of the green and yellow paint and my baby paintbrush. Now I wiped it off. If you do not want any black mixing in, you can absolutely wash it off. You know, looking at this picture right now, you could totally add a snowman in there and make it look like a snowy day. But we are thinking about spring. So I'm gonna use my green paintbrush and I am going to go around from this horizontal line right here all the way below our trees and I'm going to create a line that kind of goes up a little bit and it has to go underneath this tree. This is gonna be the line of my water. I'm gonna make a part of it kind of jump out right here. This is where my son would be fishing if he could. So this is my water line. Everything in here is water, everything out there is gonna be grass. So I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm going to make a bunch of little lines that go up. I'm not adding any yellow in it yet. I'm gonna add yellow next. I'm gonna get my base color first, which is gonna be a darker color. So I'm gonna go around my trees. I'm just gonna to try to stick with my original line that I made. The reason I'm doing this instead of just painting it in is the paintbrush will leave behind these really nice thick areas of paint and it's gonna give you texture on your picture. I love art with texture. My favorite painting in the world is Van Gogh's Starry Night and if you ever have a chance to see that picture in real life, the paint on it is so thick. You feel like you could just stand inside of it. In fact, the next painting I'm going to do for adults is Sunday, nope, not Sunday, Saturday, five o'clock, we're going to teach painting Starry Night. It's one of my favorite things to teach kids at school. And by the way, your kids are more than welcome to paint with us for that Starry Night picture. I'm going to teach it to you guys just like I teach the kids at school. After I've got my green in there, I can go through and I can wipe off my brush and I'm going to start to add a little bit of yellow. Now the yellow is not going to be as strong as the green. I'm still going to do the up and down lines on here. These vertical lines help it look like grass. I'm not covering the whole area in. I'm just trying to add some highlights so that my grass is not all one solid color. The only time your grass is all one solid color is when you pay those people to come out and fertilize your yard all the time. But we don't do that. The only fertilizer my yard gets is from the sky. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna just add in a little bit of yellow. If you start to notice that your paint is kind of filling up at one part of your brush, you can wipe it off. I like my paint to stay on the end of my brush, but sometimes when I start painting, I uh, get a little bit too excited and the paint just goes everywhere. It's an easy fix. Just wipe it off and keep going. All right. So I really like where my grass is going. You know, I'm 
I see that there's like this big, huge bump here. And I'd like to make a little area that kind of shoots out again. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to make part of this go down just a little bit. That's the nice thing about painting is you can always edit it. You can always change it. Um, you can paint it white again and start over. Yeah, I like to have some variation in my shape of my ponds. There we go. Of course, now I have to go back in and add a little bit more yellow to it. Now, my grass is about finished, but what we have an issue with is this area that goes along the water and it's just not neat and clean. So I'm gonna use my flat brush and I'm gonna use it as a stamp. So I'm actually gonna be stamping it onto the canvas. Um, I want the bristles to kind of open up a little bit. See that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of green and if I do that, it's just gonna kind of make it stamp up a little bit. And I'm gonna take the smallest amount of black that I can. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker. Yeah, right there. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna take this color right here on my brush and I'm not going to paint, but I'm just going to stamp. I'm gonna stamp along the edge. It's gonna kind of give it like a mossy, dirt area. If you notice, as I'm doing this, I'm throwing my paintbrush. As you notice, as I'm, doing, I'm kind of turning my brushes like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that I do not end up with a perfectly organized line on my edge because I really want it to be a little bit more organic. Now, here's the thing. This is the top of the grass. I'm not going to stamp over that. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna come back down here towards the base and I'm gonna stamp along there. So make sure if you have an area where you are touching the top of your grass, you are not going to stamp on the top of your grass. That makes it a much nicer area, doesn't it? Now that base looks a little bit more cleaned up. Let's talk about rocks. I love rocks. Rocks are a lot of fun. For rocks, you are going to use your black and your white, and you are going to start by mixing a nice gray color. So I'm going to take some of this white from the edge, Put it with my gray from before and I want a little, oh look, I've got some green in there. That'll be fun. And I'm going to take just a little bit of black. I do want kind of a dark gray. So I'm going to mix in. Oh yeah, that'll be a good gray to start with. The nice thing about gray is if you just add more white, you get lighter, a little bit more black and it gets darker. So you've already got your mid-tone gray. And then at the top of the rock, I'll add some white and at the bottom of the rock, I'll add some black. Rocks are organic shapes. An organic shape is a shape you can't really name. It's a shape that's found in nature. So for my organic shape, I'm just gonna kind of throw in here a blob. A blob is a good name for a rock. I'm gonna get one more. I'm gonna make two rocks over here in the corner. Now, when I have my rocks over here in the corner, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with some black and just a little bit of black on my brush, almost done. And I am going to start by just kind of gently dabbing that black on there. And as I pull it up, it's gonna get lighter. Isn't that like magic? You just pull it up and it gets lighter. I'm gonna go back in and grab a little bit more black. And I'm gonna put some more at the base. And I'm just gonna dab it up towards the top. Look at that. It just gets lighter as you go up. 
you also get this really nice texture. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the rock in the back. I'm gonna start right down here at the base. I'm gonna dab all the way up. Maybe a little bit more black at that base of it. Mm, I love painting with black. Going over the top of that other rock right now. So I'm wiping my brush off and I'm gonna grab a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna start at the top with this white paint. And I am going to just bring it down. You know, I have a little bit of green mixing in and that doesn't bother me because it kind of looks like some mossy. So with your rocks, you can kind of play with them. Change your shape and your design of them. Like my rock on the bottom right now, I'm not loving because if you look at it, it's got a flat edge, a flat edge, and it curves up. And that, to me, that's very boring. So I'm going to make this guy pop out right here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm liking him better already. And then to finish off my rocks, I'm gonna use some black on my brush. And I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna add a couple areas of darker color because these are gonna be shadows on my rock. So our rocks are not always incredibly smooth. Um, oftentimes they have some chunky areas to them. Now, if you are not loving the shape that this brush is giving you, you can always switch back to this brush, your uh, round brush, and you can always add a little bit more softness to it to kind of finish it out. The more you just kind of dab on there and tap on there, the more areas of variation you're going to get. You have a happy little rock by the side of your spring lagoon. I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing right here between the two rocks, just so that people know there are two rocks there. It's not all one. And I am happy with my rocks. Now, if you've ever been to one of my paint classes before, my favorite thing, and I can already hear my friends that have been to my paint classes saying, finger paint. Uh, guys, I am an elementary school art teacher. Finger painting kind of comes with the territory, but you can make finger painting look good in your artwork. So you're going to use your finger. And if you do not have paint on your hands at this point, you're not trying hard enough. You're gonna use your finger and you're gonna take your green and your yellow. You're gonna take a little spot of green, put it in the spot by yourself and at, pull your yellow from your side. If you go right in the middle, you're gonna get that whole thing messy. Pull your yellow from your side and you're gonna add it to it. What you're gonna do with those two colors is you're not gonna mix them. I don't want you to have a light green color, but I want you to stamp your finger inside so you've got this really interesting mix of colors. Get some of that off of there because you don't need a whole lot. You're gonna put your finger sideways. You're gonna set it on your canvas. And you're just gonna kind of move it around a little bit. Now, if you continue without getting new paint, all of your fingerprints are gonna look identical. So make sure you go back and you move that paint around, grab another space. Lily pads like to grow in groups. So as you're doing this, think about how many lily pads are gonna be in your group. It should be an odd number. If your lily pads are looking more round than oval, just set your finger down and kind of wiggle it back and forth.
I'm also going to make a group of three over here by these rocks. I think that would look nice. So I'm happy with my lily pads right now. What we're going to do next is we're going to add a little bit of detail to our water. We want our trees to dry a little bit. We want our grass to dry a little bit. We want our lily pads to dry a little bit. So we are going to add some shadow into our water. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our itty bitty baby brush. We're going to grab a little bit of black paint. I want you to watch how I do this. I want to turn this brush almost into a marker. I want the bristles to be flat and pointy. So I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna squeeze it down. I'm gonna pull it straight out. If you look at that, that's a pretty serious brush tip. So then I can dip it into my paint. And when I go on here, I'm gonna almost not touch the canvas. I wanna be completely deliberate to make itty bitty horizontal lines that are not going to be symmetrical. They're not gonna all be the same. Some are gonna be short, some are gonna be long. I could put some around the edge of my water just to show a little bit of shadow. Put some down underneath my rock. With these black lines, a little goes a long way. You don't have to add a whole bunch of them in to make a big impact. These are going to be shadows under your tree. Okay. Now, let's talk about some flowers in our grass. If your house is anything like my house, you've got daffodils coming up everywhere. Those little cute purple crocuses too. One of my favorite techniques to teach kids when we paint is you use the back of the brush, not the bristles. That's not gonna give you a perfect little circle, but the back of your brush. And with that back of your brush, you can dip it into your yellow paint and you can put all the way through your art patches of daffodils, because you know they grow in patches. If you've just got one daffodil, give it a couple years, you'll have hundreds. You can go with a little bit of purple, maybe add some crocuses down by your water. Those guys like to grow in patches too. If you are feeling spicy, you can add some red tulips popping out. I love the way the red sits in that green. I think it's so pretty. Now count your patches of colors. If you've got two patches of purple and two patches of yellow and two patches of white and two patches of red, you better add an extra patch in somewhere. Add one more little bit over here by that rock. I want to bring some interest to this rock area over here. Yep, loving that. Let's talk about 
your trees. If your trees are still wet, I want you to take a little bit of a break because I want them to be dry before you start adding your leaves on. My trees are a little bit wet, so I'm gonna take a small break and then I will add my leaves.